Hey, Miriam, how are you doing? Well, I'm really good. Thank you for asking. I'm busy with work, but I'm here. So I'm really happy to interview, to reply to your questions, Christina. Yeah. So we have known each other for a long time. Yeah. Do you remember the times of MySpace? Yes, uh, we met through MySpace uh, yeah. because you you created the uh, was the street club uh, or wh whatever was the name of the of the band yeah. Black Wings, uh, yeah, and I you created the club, it. fan club, street fan club, wh whatever was the name, but it was uh, two thousand six maybe. I can't even remember, but yeah, it's even two thousand five, probably. I need to one time to search everything because right now I don't even remember uh, which year we met each other. So yes, we can in, we can say that it was a re it is a long, long time yeah. between each other. But since then, many things happen. We both moved in another country, and uh, and yeah, life life happened. Yeah, life and shit happens. I might say. <laughs> yeah, but we are alive and going strong. <laughs> yes, yes. Despite all, yes. Yeah, but let's start to talk about the uh, fan metal website. Um, how? Did this website start? Because you are the the mind behind the fan metal website. So tell us how this happened. Oh, oh, oh! That's a long story. Even this one. I mean, um, I inherited fan metal website from a girl who was having also the. Fan metal records at the time, so it was around oh my god, two thousand and two thousand four five. So half of two thousands, and uh, now it's two thousand and three. Uh, it's like like more than fifteen years that's going on, and um, what really happened is. I was in the forum at the time and I simply I was working with her, I was helping her with promotion and yeah, what I remember it all went really fast because then he gave she gave she gave me the the name of the website plus I inherited also the stuffers. Of which, uh, yeah, none of them has stayed because you know, um, I want to be positive right now, but uh, unfortunately, we don't get paid to do this. It's all patient based. So sometimes people, like it happened to me, have to put, you know, um, put aside passion for work and. And studies and that's what happened when yeah with people so it's a passion based and a, is a passion fueled project and well we put a lot of yeah commitment in it um it's sometimes difficult but i feel grateful for doing that and uh yeah, I mean, we are always searching new people. So um, if you are someone that likes to, to write or, um, yeah, writing, uh, you are musically open-minded, well, that's your place. And I'll be more than happy to uh, welcome you. And that's how the story goes and continues. Yeah, and 
Fem Metal Webzyme is not only about metal music, but there is a lot of uh, subgenres uh, and uh, it's it's a particular universe. Can you can you tell more what other uh, genres Fem Metal Webzyme covers? Well, we cover rock. We try to cover rock. We try to cover a bit of Americana, a bit of uh, indie rock a bit of uh, industrial, a bit of uh, folk, uh, ambient. So we try, we try, but it's difficult because we are missing staffers. And yeah, I mean, we are trying, but it's difficult. But our main idea is not to be focused just on one. Yeah, just metal. I think redundant all these subcategories and categories because I am of the idea of to be um to listen to my feeling and be music just a feeling, you know. I'm not we are not like uh, I'm not a fan of categories actually, so I'm trying to be um yeah open minded like I am and in a way music um uh, it's what uh reflects me in a way in my um who I am in a way because I am an open minded person and music I think for me it's a feeling it's not a category and it's not a subgenre and it's not uh just that so it's um it's more than that it's a passion it's a feeling it's uh uh it's something that moves you something that um uh, uh push you to uh not give up to something uh something that motivates you so i don't i don't know exactly which word to use because Again, I find it difficult, but uh, what I want to do with my staffers and my publication, and you know, Christina, uh, what I mean is that, um, yeah, being open-minded, be who you are, and just express yourself. Um, um, I really don't care about labels or music, and... I find it redundant and I find it limiting in a way. Yeah, that's true. And uh, you are the, the boss of... Uh, no, no, I'm not the boss. Really, well, I'm the boss. Yeah, but uh, beside... Uh, uh, you know me, I don't yeah, care. I, know. I don't care about the numbers. I've been doing this for 15 years with the sole purpose of doing what I like, not reaching out big numbers. I'm not a big publication. I'm a proud to be a, 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 I'm, I'm a proud to be not a big publication. Yeah. It's just what it is. I don't care about being a big publication. And, you know, I know that being honest to yourself then uh, brings you to not compromise. I won't compromise, simple as that. So um, being a big boss, yeah, I am a big boss because I have to try to keep everything organized, but... Yeah, but besides organizing everything, you also do reviews, interviews, and uh, photography, right? Yeah, I'm trying to do everything except the reviews because reviews are my worst enemy. I am, I I cannot do reviews. I am honest. I cannot do reviews. I love doing interviews. Yes, I feel the same. That the reviews, if you remember, you were the one that contacted me to to do collaboration and I start with you and at the beginning 10 years ago <laughs> I told you that re review 
reviews are more easy than interviews, but with, ti with times it changed. And then I find the uh, writing a review of uh, more art, maybe because I, I don't, I don't know. I f I feel bad if I don't. I'm not feeling the music, or maybe it's not really my taste. And uh, I, I'm not like, who am I to write something, something bad no. about about an album? <laughs> So it's it's a, that it's a struggle, but interviews uh, they became easier. More easy. Yeah, with the time, with confidence, yeah. uh, knowing the people. Yes and no. Because I did a lot of uh face to face interviews lately, and. You know, it depends who, which is your interlocutor. You know, it all depends who is replying your questions. Because if this person likes to properly, you know, to sincerely in a reply to your questions without giving um statements or que um standard replies like happens because maybe you know business world is difficult because musical because the music business world is difficult and even artists sometimes they cannot say stuff so most of the times i got to edit stuff that i i wasn't allowed to share and that's in that moment that I got the perspective of the artist, but I had to cut it out. Yeah. And most of the times um, when they are on promotion, sure, you have to talk about the album, but you can get just 15 minutes of 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Um, you have to be... Um, you know, focused and also try to be attractive to the interlocutor. If not, you get you get questions like, uh, no, another time this question, I'm, I'm tired. So the challenge is always trying to um, researching properly and listening to the album, even if it's not your genre. That's why I'm telling you, yeah, it can be easy or not, but depends. And be lucky to have the correct person to speak about it. Yeah. That's one of the secret I think. Yeah. Yeah, basically. And you have to tailor your interview because if you have if you are talking with with a newcomer, surely you can ask more questions. But if you are talking about the sixth album of the same band, you have to try to um avoid stupid questions because those won't be interesting to read. Yeah. They won't be interesting neither for you to do to to ask them, and either for the interlocutor to reply them. So it's always a challenge, and also the issue is that uh, you have to be um, also careful what you ask, because mm -hmm. if you uh, if you ask too much personal questions, um, the the interlocutor can. Yeah, can be irritated. Let's let's put it like that. Yeah, I never had cases. That's, I mean, I never had someone who stopped the interview for that reason, because I am a, I do take care about my privacy and I do the same with the artists. 
but sometimes I find the press releases really uh, too cryptic and it's difficult. So, um, yeah, um, and maybe what we are talking about medium big artists that they don't they don't get in you don't get the, the chance to interview them often so it's given take it or leave it yeah yeah and it's really hard sometimes in those 10 15 minutes carry out a interview that you get everything you need sometimes yeah. you need to squeeze it depends how much the other person is telling but yeah, uh, sometimes it's really it's really hard, and uh, sometimes there is the manager there uh, oh, yeah. looking at you to... and uh, hey, time. Yeah, I, I had a manager coming inside, um, yeah, watching the clock and saying, yeah, no, five minutes more, and then it's finished because they have to do um sound check. Yeah. I had a lot of occasion that was like that. And yeah, I didn't have had the time to do a photo with them. So yeah, I'm I'm not a sucker for photos. So I I I I don't ask them because I'm privileged. But I understand sometimes they are really busy that they don't have the time to do that. Yeah. And I'm not the, the kind of person that acts like a fun girl, like, I want a photo, because it's not the case, it's not professional. So, you, you are there, like, in two different positions. That's you as a fan and you as a professional, because when I, I go there, I represent my publication. So I have to be professional a little bit. The means including also when you have the photo pit for a pussy fair, which I'm gonna release next week the photos. Um I have just two songs in Tilburg to do the photos in the photo pit. And after that, the security co comes against you saying this. So out of the photo pits and what you got, what you got is what you got. Yeah. So no second chance because if during the concert there is no photos policy allowed and the security sees you, well, that's a big problem. So uh, I hope I did a good job with Push Pussy Fair. Uh, because the lights, the first song were nice but difficult. What kind of lights? Well, blue, blue oh. and blue and green. Plus, I'm not two meter long, and the stage of uh, New Thirteen in Tilburg is higher. I have my mouth ear so i have to put myself near the stage and do the photo like this so it's it's challenging and then the la the pre previous um band that i went to photos for photos is spirit box in harlem uh the patronat problem yeah i am in the first row but there is no photo pit so what you do? Uh, you, you try uh, to survive. <laughs> yeah, precisely. You try to survive. And which... keep your camera safe. That's that's a, a big thing. Yes, number one. Number two, uh, you, you have on the second band also uh, some sort of um, stair where the singer steps on and you have to do like this so you have conditions which are not optimal but you try your best yeah yeah and you you have shitty lights because since we are talking about metalcore or modern metal whatever you like to call 
uh, there are crazy lights, so flashy lights. It's difficult. Um, I might say um, I just started last year in November to do photos, and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. I I think I need to ask maybe to you um get some feedback if you want whenever you want <laughs> I will try to reply as as fast as I can <laughs> but yeah I'm learning I mean uh, the only thing you can do you can learn on in the moment and it, the same goes doing interviews yeah, experience is the key. Is the key. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes it's difficult to get an interview because, um, you know, the artist is well scammed from the management sometimes that if not even the label can reach them out. So, yeah. in that case, the best that you can get is a photo pass. But photo passes some locals here in the Netherlands, and I'm not complaining because the facilities are great, and I I'm compl complimenting them. Are difficult because there are there is no photo pits. Yeah. And yeah, you have to push through people, and sometimes, especially now, once again, I don't want to do a therapy using stereotypes, but I know the Dutch audience, if you tell them, well, I need to do photos, I am, I am uh, press, they let you go. But with an international audience, like the one of the with Spirit Box was a bit difficult. Yeah. And I'm not complaining, you know, I'm, I just, I want also, I'm not I'm not complaining and I want to explain myself right now that when this interview will be released I don't want them to receive backlash for nobody yeah. but I just want to explain how this how it works works and how in which way you have to adapt yourself to a situation where you have to consider a lot of pro and cons that's all because yeah. in every situation there is a pro a con and um, yeah you can be the best photographer ever but you if you are doing photos from the first row with no photo pits and after they are doing the wall of that well uh, you have to think about your safety first and and about your camera that's yeah 700 euros and then about the best photo ever so you have to do some uh balancing of choices yeah i know i know <laughs> i have the same problem you know <laughs> but but i i'm still alive my camera is alive yeah i, I always look around uh, i know when they are starting to do some when someone is start to mosh moshing or a uh, wall of that is uh, coming or mosh pit in general. So use your eye. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, how many people are now working for uh, for the website? Well, including you from yeah. Finland. Because besides being my friend, you are working there yes. with me. Um, we have one girl from, <clears throat> sorry, from Sweden, one girl from US, um, that's me, and that's another friend from Italy, and momentarily we are like this. Yes. So it's that's international. Kind of, yeah, we are really international. Um, the only thing... If you are thinking to apply for a reviewer position, just please, I beg you, please, to be serious. Even it's a, if it's a passion, um, I set you a deadline of a review. 
um, I just ask you to be precise with that because then it's difficult for me to organize and then I have to reply to uh, promoters and then I don't want to disappoint anybody. So if you're thinking about, yeah, I'm going there just for getting free freebies, it's no go because freebies um with the um, yeah with the fact with the fact that everything is almost digital we don't get freebies anymore i i can remember the start of 2000s we still we were still receiving a lot of demos and it was different then but right now we work everything digital and everything it's watermarked so yeah, if you upload it somewhere, then they get back to me, not to you. So that's me that causing the problem then. So if you are really serious about it, you want to give it a give it a try, it's fine. Love it. I'm welcoming you with open arms, but what I require is a bit a bit of commitment and precise with the deadlines. I'm not I'm not like a big boss. I'm understanding that there are more important things going on in each of our lives, but just that it's enough. Yeah, that's important. Uh let's talk about the interviews. Uh how easy is to get in touch with managers and get the interviews happen <laughs> i know you, the answer but people don't know <laughs> well people doesn't know that before you get the green go you have to wait minimum 10 days for example or you get the the go the same day of the concert, while maybe I am at school in The Hague and the concert is in Utrecht. So for me, it's almost one hour train and the school maybe is finished around three and going to uh, Utrecht, it, it means going around five. And then for me, it means running to the station, take the first train and then be there at five because you have the appointment with the band. And if you are late to that appointment, then it's not happening because, because they have they have to eat before and they have to have sound check. So interviews are always most of the times, 90% of the times before sound check, not after, because after they have to eat and then get ready. So it's not glamorous to say, but it's difficult. It's or, a lot of, uh, of uh, doing with your timetable. You have to put little pieces all over, trying to, to manage it somehow. If, for example, if you are openers, you get them to talk 30 minutes after their show. So it means that if it's a three band show, you miss the second one and you enter back in the in the zone in the local after 20 minutes and you just miss almost the whole show of the second one so you have to do choices you know it's about being uh, being at the availability of the bands you don't get to decide which time because the, the time is decided by the tour management or by the band itself. So you don't get to just tell them, yeah, you know, I, I cannot go come right now. I just come at 5.30. No, sorry, 5.30, I have another interview or um, um have some check. And then becomes later after the show, but the show is finished at 10, 10 30. Um, yeah, if I am with the auto, I can wait even after 10 30, it's no problem. But if I am with the train, it's a big no go. Yeah, it's not easy. 
Yeah. So far, which one is the biggest artist you interviewed? It's a difficult question. Yeah. Or the one that was the most important for you because... I would still always remember interviewing um, Selim Lamouchi from the Devil's Blood. Um, also because I don't know if anybody knows he, he, he committed suicide three, four years ago. And I, I, I remember that interview like it was today. I get sincerely a uh, shiver. shiver to the thought I did interview him and I was, I felt lucky actually. And considering even my past and my, um, yeah, my past, um, yeah, um, uh, past, yeah, experiences. I I was aware I wasn't not aware of what was going on already in the time, but now I do. So it feels bittersweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so a, a weird feeling. So I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um Well, uh, I got to meet Ivor, the magnificent Far East singer, and she still remembers me. So that's what I I do for. Yeah. Um. Well, then. Uh, well, it's. I just watch a little bit here. I mean, uh, you have a list of interviews you did, or what? I know for sure. A uh, A uh, uh, Williams remembers me mm -hmm. every time. Um, I were, um, Amarante, Amarante. They every time they come playing here in the Netherlands, they remember me from the first show in. Italy in Trieste opening really? for so every time I have Olaf saying to me oh I remember you I you were in Eindhoven no I wasn't just I wasn't just in Eindhoven I was in Trieste with Camelot oh yeah I remember you I remember you so uh, I can I'm not friends we are not friends but they remember me Oh, oh, uh, oh, it's all, always nice when the artist yeah. remembers you. It yeah. it it means that uh, you you did something right. Yeah, precisely. You say something that they remember, and it's it's really it's it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, every time we meet, and he sees my name, he sees my name. Yeah. <laughs> Amaran song. Um, he's seriously. I'm. I'm not. I'm a simple person. I'm not. I don't have any egos. But he says to me, "Oh yeah, I remember you from Trieste." And this is the best thing that you can get from that. Yeah. So Miriam, how did you get into metal music? No, the the question is wrong. How did I get into music? It's more correct. Okay, how did you get into music? <laughs> well, the quarter version of the question is thanks to my father. My father is a big, 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 big fan of progressive rock. And yeah, I mean, I I inherited his same passion for vinyls and CDs. So um, he 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I listen to the same music of him, but how I get into metal is through some CDs, burnt CDs of 2000 of System of Down, Battery, and then I have the fulguration of Nightwish with the Wishmaster. Yeah. And I got those burn CDs from the former uh, guitarist of Overtours. Yeah. You know Daniele Piccolo? Mm. Overtours? I, I remember the Overtures, but I, I think that I met them after. Last after. Yeah. So he was my neighbor. Plus, he was giving me repetition of mathematics. Okay. So I have to thank him that he gave me this CDs if I got into meta. Yeah. That longer version. If you ask me about the first, the first. The first concert I saw was Pooh. With <laughs> the Pooh. Pooh, Pooh. The only, the you, the the only, the one and only Pooh from Italy. Yeah. In San Giovanni and Atizona. I don't remember the year, but that was my first serious concert. You can say whatever you want of Pooh, but but they the, made Italy history. Yeah, we have a music history, rock songs, rock songs ever. Well, um, I I I I love Parsifal of Pooh, 1972. Yeah. Nice rock album. Sung in Italian with uh, Robbie, Dodi, Riccardo, and Stefano. This, uh, so, uh, I mean, we are talking about the history here. Yeah. You can, you can say whatever you want, but uh, though that remains my, my first concert. And the second serious concert was the year of. I take sense from a memory with my father near Treviso for this concert. I still remember it, that. I almost touched the, one of the drum, not the drums, but... The drumstick. Sorry? Drumstick? Or the drum of Mike Portnoy. Oh, home. Oh, home. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Do you still have it? No, I don't have it because it went uh, after. Uh, oh, okay. After me, and I was small, so they got into a fight to get the fucking drum fit. Normal. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, metal album? Let's talk about metal. This is a hard question. Yeah. A difficult question. Well, I can well decipher after forever. Yeah. Cycle after forever. Um Edinburgh Sunrise in Eden. Mm, yeah. The best dream theater since from a mem uh, uh uh, scenes from a uh, yeah memory. Um, X Japan with uh, wait. I have to search. I I have to read the title because it's a Japanese uh um yeah Japanese title. So uh X 
simple x 1989 uh, then uh, silence uh, sonata arctica uh, there are a lot divine conspiracy of epic theory mm. of um Opeth, uh, we are talking about Opeth. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I can say I was. There are so many. Well, of course, now I, I'm playing an uh, easy card and I'm going to say the discography. Now, I, I am a Nightwish fan, okay? So I, I, I'm. I have my own view and I'm gonna talk about it right now. I mean, I'm enjoying the album from Angel Sun Forest and Hugh Imaginarium. After, I don't think they are good albums. I kinda, I am kinda disemoted with Nightwish right now. I didn't even went to the last two over here in Amsterdam. Um, simply because I find it repetitive, the last two albums. Um, I miss Marco Marco Yetela. Um, I miss Marco Yetela. I didn't like how he was outed in a way. I didn't even like the situation with Annette. I don't like how. Uh, is going with Floor the situation? I mean, and uh, Floor is like like uh, an employee from uh, from the uh, from the uh, Gemente from the um, City Hall. She do she sings her lines and stuff. I don't see. I don't feel the old Floor from after forever. I miss that fucking thing. I mean, please go check out fucking. Um, Fucking invisible cycles, um, decipher please, because those are the albums. Then we can discuss a lot of, about technicalities, but I'm sorry, uh, what I'm listening in the last, uh, I don't know, five, six years, it's a dead band for me. Ah, uh, then I can continue talking about the gathering. Uh, I love Night and Birds. I love Tristania, the old Tristania. But I really didn't like the way they split up apparently right now. So I found it, I found it a bit strange. Um. Early Sirenia, also the new one are really nice. I love, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Draconian, um, all the doom metal. I am a doom metal fan. Um, theater of Tragedy. Theater of Tragedy, the whole discography, whatever you can say about the Neil, Neil Siglund, but uh, it's there, it's history and it's there. I mean, okay, the first four albums with uh, Liv Christine, okay, fine, okay. But what did come after was fantastic anyway. Uh, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, I mean, I hear at home in the Netherlands, I don't have my whole CD collection. I have just a small part. The small part that I'm collecting that I am here building up. The rest is all in Italy. So um, same, same, same problem. <laughs> so I I would need to go back at home and check what I have, and probably I will get triggered by the good feelings, and I have few things home. Yeah. I mean, uh, asking me which is my favorite, it's difficult because every period is a, 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 
another and every period I listen to something else. Um, so is it? It makes sense. But uh, let's go to random topics. I have this jar with uh, some bits of paper and let's see what we are going to get. I love this idea. Yeah, I have, a, I have used this and uh, everybody were happy. At least it's what they say. <laughs> So let's see, the first topic is, again, cars. Cars? Oh. Yeah. Are no, you I a don't... car fan? I, I, I'm not really the suitable person to talk about <laughs> cars. So if my auto gets breaks down, I will call the, the help. So yeah. I don't understand anything about cars. What car do you own? What I own is a Mazda right now. Okay. Mazda 6, I think. I don't even know the model. So what so color it, is it? Uh, gray metallic. Metallic yeah. gray. So uh, uh, you can understand from my reply how much <laughs> I am into cars. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an expert. Uh, I think when I was a teenager, I was more into cars. I was buying uh, those um, journals about cars and dreaming about what car I'm going to buy. And I don't even have the drive license. Think about that. I mean, the only thing I know that these new cars are fucking complicated because right now I'm working for... Um, uh, the Dutch uh, touring club. So um, I'm getting more and more into the uh, situation and understanding that these autos are mostly electronic. Uh, 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 they have a lot of electronics. And I understand that if one piece goes kaput, then after there goes other two. And the problem is, for repair this auto, you have to go to a dealer. And those are expensive reparation because mostly yeah. are software related. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't get into that. I need another life. Yeah. Do you have a dream car? No, not really. For me, what is important that's safe and that's rideable to go to the, to, together with my boyfriend and to go to the concert. So. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah. Let's pick another. Let's hope for something more interesting, something more for you. Let's let's take this this one. This one. I don't know if you are a game person. No, not really. <laughs> I am a book person that well. What are you? A book person. Book person. Let's let's keep that game away. Let's let's see if we get uh, something better for you. I don't know. Cartoons. Ah. ah. So now it's better. Now it's yeah. better. <laughs> so well, I am. 33 years old, but I'm still a fan of Cristina D'Avena. Nobody yeah. outside Italy knows who she is, but she's one of our... She is the, the most important singer from the 80s. children uh, uh, programs and cartoons uh, uh, jingle or whatever is the, the name. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, if you are uh, between 40 and 30 and you were born around those years, you know who is, who she is, Cristina D'Avena. I mean, I still remember fucking songs from when I was six or seven, like, uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, Kirikato. Oh, 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 oh. I am not singing because I'm bad in, I'm a really bad singer. But I tell you one thing about this, just just a small corner out of the those cartoons. Uh Saturday 
I was I was in a pub. There were not many people, and my friend were like, uh, "You should sing something in Italian." And I find in the karaoke few songs, so I sang in Italian two songs. But in the between, I also sang uh, "Lie Lie Hey" from Encifero. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so let's talk about cartoons. Uh, what's your favorite cartoon? Sailor Moon. It makes sense because we grow up watching Sailor Moon. Every one of us was dreaming to be a sailor. Uh, yeah, what? I was dreaming to be one of those uh, special sailors. Yeah. Like uh, Sailor Pluto. Something yeah. Like that. But I got shocked when they sugar coated in our country. The fact they that, always do that. Say, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune were together as a couple. And you know how the fuck they turn in Italy? They turn into sisters. Yeah. So I was shocked. <laughs> but uh, which one was your favorite sailor? Uh, Saturnus? Yeah. I'm thinking. Um... My was, let me think, uh, was Sailor. Oh, then, why I can't remember? I can remember the green one. Green one, Jupiter. Yes, that one. <laughs> that one. I love, you know, I love Mila and Shiro. Oh, yeah. Sempre, sempre così. Sarà per me. And do you remember Mimi? It was it was also about volleyball, but it was uh, before Mila and, and Shiro. Occhi, di, occhi di gatto, the three sisters that were stealing always. Oh yeah, it's a classic one. Or do you remember Lady Oscar? Lady... Of course, but you know, Lady Oscar was a bit boring for me. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe it was too much into yeah but they even if they even censor that in italy i mean the, tra the who doctor was a man but in reality she was a, a, a woman yeah so you guys you have to real to watch the real japanese mangas not the italian versions because yeah you get culturally shocked like me, like when I discovered that the two special sailor s they were a gay couple back. And about the gay couple, this this month is the Pride Month. So special the last month. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> you know, it's this month, you know why? Because Two weeks here in Amsterdam, they will celebrate queer. And for uh, everybody that is watching, uh, this interview is happening uh, now in uh, at the end of July. <laughs> Just <to be> okay. <laughs> well, you can even search of intern in internet Pride Amsterdam. So I'm not saying bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, and. Uh... Uh, yeah, you watch all those uh, manga-based cartoons, but uh, do you like also Disney movie? I love Disney. The all Disney are the best ones. Yeah, true. And uh, after that, I shut my mouth. I yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite Disney movie? Pocahontas. Uh, Fantasia. Yeah. Bambi. I don't know. I the, the Bambi thing. I don't know if I'm able to watch that. It's Bambi, Dumbo, and uh, Red and Toby. They are so sad. Yeah. The Lion, the Lion King also, but not. I I don't I don't yeah. know. It's not that much. Bambi is fucking sad. Yeah. But. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I don't know, sometimes I think 
you know, we grow up watching things that were sometimes not really meant for children. Uh, do you remember that uh, that friend? I think it was a French uh, cartoon where the those animals from the forest were moving away, and every episode one was dying. What's the name? Uh, uh, yeah. I think that in Italian is Gli Animali del Bosco. I forgot it. But it was so sad. So, so sad. And every day I was watching that. Gli Animali del Bosco. What, what come out when you... Uh, wait, wait. Uh, Maybe it was not the name. Yeah, it's the name, but okay. in English is the animals of of parking wood. Okay. So, so that one, if you watch that, you have some trauma because I think we all have. <laughs> yeah, is it a French one or? Or were it... Wait, wait, you are right. It's 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 English French actually. Okay, maybe it's Canadian, I don't know. No no, it's uh, it's English French. Okay, interesting. I yeah. had this this in my mind that it was French somehow. But yeah, let's talk about something more uh, more uh, fun, not that sad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about pizza. Pizza? Oh my yeah. god. Do you like pizza? Pizza, I miss the real pizza. It's two years I'm not going in Italy. Yeah. So but... miss the real pizza. I found some pizzas here, but are good, okay, but the real might be I miss my pizza. Yeah. I know, I know. But I'm going to Italy in don't two ask, days. So don't ask me which pizza I prefer because I don't have any. I choose You should. What's your favorite pizza? I have to ask that. Nobody. I like all the pizzas. Do you like uh, Hawaiiana? Yeah, no, that one no. But if you <laughs> propose me like a Bismarck like uh, Sardinia, like uh, pizza cuckoo, Coco, whatever, whatever the name is. Whatever. You know that, what about that pizza with uh, French fries and uh, a egg on the top? Good. <laughs> I think that for many people uh, outside Italy, because in Italy, French fry on a pizza is a thing, but I think that for many it's outside of Italy, it's something what what the hell? <laughs> but it's a thing. It's a real thing. I mean, my brother eats just that pizza. Okay. So I, I know that's a, a thing, that pizza. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, I don't go further into that because. Don't ask me how that is born, how was born that, sorry. But pizza with fries in my country is a big thing. Yeah. Where did you eat the best pizza? There was a particular place. So far, if you talk about Netherlands, it's Vincenzo's in Denmark, in the okay. Hague. And in Italy, all. <laughs> Alampione Gorizia. Okay. So write down those names if you go there. Please write down the names if you are in the Netherlands. South Holland, come in Vincenzo's. Not the one in Princess Strat, but the other one is Staten Quartier. 
There is some 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 uh, advertising without uh, without the pizzeria knowing that. <laughs> yes, I'm doing a advertising without knowing it. Yeah, Good. but I'm doing that because I, I like it. Yeah, but uh, now let's go to the most important que question of this interview because. Every interview of Metal Pizza have this important the the one the one that everybody wants to know because people in the world are divided in two the one that think yes and the one that think no. So do you think that pineapple goes on pizza? I no comment. No comment. <laughs> Each pizza is different. Each place where pizza get produced is different. So I don't want to be um, like, I don't want to avoid the question, but this is not even a politically correct question, but it's just the truth. So you stay in neutral. <laughs> Yeah, because everyone has its own method to do pizza. Yeah, it makes sense. But do you put pineapple on your pizza? No. Do you like it on the pizza? No. So you are more on the no <laughs> than the yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I think that it's hard to find any Italian that think that uh, a pineapple belong on pizza. You're but... speaking with an American. I'm sure the American would tell you, yeah, pizza, pizza, why with the pineapple? Yeah. But so it's far a... to all the interviews I did, just one person said yes. Um, and who was this person? Well, you will see watching the interviews. I'm not going to tell you. Okay. This is curious. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have done with this interview. Uh, I'm really happy that you were up to do this. And uh, yeah, do you want to say something to people? Yes. Well, now I don't want to be redundant. But try to be positive. Try to surround yourself with people that give you good vibes. I believe in that. And try to also be careful of yourself. Take care of yourself. Do not, you know, overload too much yourself. Um, I know so our society is like oh, 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 always learning, but you have to give time to yourself. That's my last uh, words. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was really a pleasure, and uh, well, we 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 have uh, other things to talk about uh, in the private and uh, i have to prepare for you some things for the for the scene so that's that's it but i hope that people enjoyed this interview and uh, if you have any anyone that you want me to interview write in the comments thank you so much for your Thank time you. Thank <laughs> you.